Hi folks, see you speaking again. Today we are going to check and build a very compact little thing. I'm gonna call it a micro trainer. That's exactly what you need when you check or troubleshoot the most of the integrated circuits, particularly the sequential ones, counters, shift registers, uh, let's say uh, uh, multiplexers and the like, okay? So let's do it. Because it's going to take a pretty long time to um, draw this uh, live. I prepared already for you the diagram, it's right here. And we're going to use what we already know. Right here, that section, that little section, is a debouser we built already before with inverters. The debouser itself, it only needs one inverter, but because we may need to get both kind of edges, the rising edge and the falling edge, then we're going to use two inverters. But this is the thing you know. So, because in the most of these kind of uh, projects, we're going to need four signals, this is why we have one, two, three, four little sections. They can be done in th three different ways. If you only want to use push buttons, like this one here, or this one, then you can have one, two, and instead of the other two here, you can just copy paste the top ones. So you're gonna get four identical debouncers for push buttons. Second way to do it, is if you only use micro switches. So, like this one's here, this one or that one. So if you want, you can copy these two lower parts and to copy them in the top. So you're going to have only four RS flip-flops in the top of the diagram, on the left side of the diagram, sorry. And the third way to do it is to have a mixture between the two and this is what I built because I want to show you that both of them are working just fine. You can choose either push buttons or micro switches, or you can combine them and they're gonna work just fine. So now, what do you actually need when you want to check integrated circuits, sequential ones, or in general, your projects containing counters, shift registers, and so on? You need pulses, but remember the pulses, they may have two edges. One edge is when the signal is initially low or zero, and when you push the button, it goes up. If you take a look at this one right here, it's off. When I press this button, it goes on. I release the button, it goes back off, okay? And if you need the opposite of it, you have it here, and this is the falling edge, because initially the signal is high, and then when you press the button, it goes low. You release it, it goes back high. If you press it, it goes low. So you have both controlled by the same push button. This one is right here. So the two things, rising edge, falling edge, and the third thing you may need are switches. Instead of using mechanical switches or electromechanical switches, we're going to use electronic ones by using what something we already know from the previous videos, JK flip-flops, okay? JK flip-flops. So because you have one, two, three, four JK flip-flops, you're going to connect the output of them, one, two, three, four LEDs, these big ones over here, the red ones. And these are going to check the JK flip-flops. What are they doing? They lock the signals, so making something you also know under the name of the latch. In other words, anytime you press it, if it is one, it toggles to zero. So there's like a mechanical switch. Off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on. If you use micro switches, it's the same thing. Now it's off and goes on, off, on. Micro switch, off, on, off, on. Okay? And all these signals are monitored. The rising gauge is monitored here. The falling edge is monitored here, and the latch is monitored over here. So if one little section of that project fails for whatever reason, usually because of bad contacts on the wiring and so on, it's extremely easy to troubleshoot, simply because you know exactly where to focus because you monitor everything on the LEDs. So now, 
if I just pick this one up to thicker than here, just to make sure we get it, exactly from here, from this point, I'm gonna get the rising edge over here. And from here, I'm gonna get the falling edge, like that. So anytime you need to pick, let's say, a rising edge, you focus on the inverter package. Take a look, the inverter package right here. You pick up your wire, let's suppose this one, and you connect between the pins two and three. Pins two and three, right here. And then you pick it over the top section of your breadboard. Forgot to tell you, our project is so tiny that it fits exactly one section of the breadboard. So you have one made of two sections. Here in the top, you can put the circuit you want to check. I'm going to use as example here an intelligent uh, display, which has embedded inside not only the display itself, an alphanumerical one, but also a decoder. So it's going to be able to understand the binary and to make it alphanumerical. So, this is how you take your signals from here. And if it is the same case you need to do for the RS flip-flops for the micro switches, right here you have the falling edge, okay? Like that. And over here, in this connecting point, you can get your rising edge if you need it. Because right now I'm not using it anywhere but in your project is ready for use anytime. And by the way, how do I know for a micro switch, this is a, a falling gauge right here in this point, and it's not the opposite. Simply because initially the micro switch, this is the common of the micro switch. This is the normally closed contact, normally closed, and this is the normally open. And because this is the normally closed before I press it, related to the ground is going to bring a zero here. It doesn't matter what's on the other pin, because zero times anything else is a zero, and reversed because of this bubble is a one logic. This one logic comes here as a one, and because here the circuit is open, it only collects a five volts from the top, is another one logic. One times one is one, and reversed is a zero. So initially this is a one, and this is a zero. If it is a one, it's in the top. When I press the button, it comes down. This is how I knew that is, is the falling edge. The opposite of it is here. This is initially zero, so it's down. And when I press the button, it just goes up. Obviously, when I raise my finger from the micro switch, they go back in the initial state. One in the top, zero in the bottom. And this one here is one section of the uh, um, JK flip-flop. And by the way, the package I'm using is 74 LS76, which contains two JK flip-flops in the same package. So I need actually two packages, one over here and another one over here. So if I go to see them, they are right here. JK flip-flop, JK flip-flop, both packages are 74, 76. And uh, because you have a bubble, remember what the bubble means, it requires a falling gauge in order to operate this kind of signal. And this is why I connected the falling gauge over here and not the rising gauge. The rising gauge is not in use right now, but anytime you need to use it in your project, because again, it depends on the type of the integrated circuit, some of them, they require a rising gauge, then you can use it. Why do we need these kind of input circuits? Simply because any mechanical switch, regardless if it is a push button on a micro switch or other kind of switches, maybe excepting for the keys of your keyboards, which are, if they are cheap, uh, rubber made, but all of them, they have an inherent bouncing. So you need to correct that bouncing to get rid of it. The only kind of uh, push button I use, this one over here, is on the right side of the diagram, is used for the reset, for the reset of all the four JK flip-flops at the same time. And for the reset, I don't need to debounce it because if the reset is received on all the JK flip-flops three or four or five times in the first 10, 20 uh, microseconds, it just won't matter, okay? Nobody's going to notice anything. They're gonna still be reset. You take a look, I'm resetting them right now. They are now one, zero, one, one. It doesn't matter. When I press the button, all of them, they go zero. 
as you can also see on the display. But I know they are zero because all the lights go off, so all the switches are off at this time. Whatever I'm pressing later on, okay, like uh, right now, the two in the middle are one, so I have a zero, one, one, zero in binary. It doesn't matter. When I press this push button over here, which is on the right side of the diagram, this is the reset for all the four JK flip flops at the same time. So that's the only one which does not need debouncing, okay? All the others, one, two, three, four, they need debouncing, even if they are push buttons, like in the top two ones, or micro switches, like the bottom ones. So far, so good. So now, because we know where we take signals from, where we take uh, uh, rising edges, where we take falling edges from, uh, in our diagram here, I just use for the, uh, for the toggle switches, JK flip-flops. Then I can give it a check. I can give it a check over this very special display. Okay? So the way it's working is going to be like that. Now it is a zero because all the lights are off. If I only press this one here, in binary it's going to be 0, 0, 0, 1, and obviously I'm going to see here converted in my decimal the 1. Okay? If I'm going to get here 0, 0, 1, 0, I'm going to have the equivalent of the number 2 as I can see it here, and then I make it uh, 0, 0, 1, 1 is going to be 3. So this way I can, mechanic, I can manually check my project. Now it's 0, 1, 0, 0, it's going to be 4. If I'm going to press this one, it's going to be, sorry, not this one, that one. It's going to be 0, 1, 0, 1 is 5, as you can see. Okay. If I press this one now, 0, 1, 1, 0 is going to be 6. Okay. Two more, 0, 1, 1, 1 is going to be 7, obviously. Okay. Now I put them off, and I'm going to press only this one. 1, 0, 0, 0 in binary is going to be 8. And finally, if I only press this one, 1, 0, 0, 1, is going to be a 9, okay? Certainly, intelligent circuits like these ones here, they are going to be able to understand binary signals which are going over 9. Like if I'm pressing this one here, 1, 0, 1, 0, this is 10. And because the number 10, it needs two digits to be displayed, 1 and 0 to, to display the 10, intelligent displays like this one, they use the hexadecimal system, and in hexadecimal, the numbers between 10 and 15, so 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, are replaced by letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, okay? So right now, this is where you see the letter A. For the 11, it's going to be B, because B is after A. And if I want to put the 12, it's going to be 1100, 0, 0, which is C. Then I'm going to get 1110, 1, 1, which is E, which is 14 in my decimal. And when all the four LEDs are on, it's going to be the letter F, because 111 1, 1 in binary is F, okay? or 15 if you want, okay? So this is, this is an interesting thing to understand how the binary is converted into the decimal. And uh, it's coming soon, we're going to start to build counters. But before being able to build counters, in the next video, we're going to understand how to count in binary, exactly what I did in the project, okay? So this being said, you are going to find the whole diagram uh, on uh, Google Drive. So anytime you want to build it, it's going to be easy peasy because you are going to have the whole diagram. Thank you very much for today. See you next time to understand counting in binary. Bye-bye.